Hello Rabbags, it's Jade. Welcome to another Valheim News video. 5 million Vikings. 5 million PlayStation 2 looking little characters running around, taking on Greylings and chopping a lot of wood. That is incredible. 5 million players in 4 weeks. Some people seem to get the hump that I like talking about this kind of stuff. That it's bigger than this game, what it's done so well. I'm just really happy that a game that I'm really enjoying is just really well made, really well put together and it's just absolutely fantastic and popular. Can't I be happy too? I'm sure I'm nowhere near as ecstatic as the team though. All five of them celebrating five million people. That is huge. So we'll go over this briefly. We're going to talk about the origins of Valheim. I'm going to show you exactly what the game developer was making before he hit with Valheim and what it used to be called, how basic it really was. Also got another interview that reveals a few more details as well about Valheim's development and possible other stuff. And there is a significant bug that has been implemented since the last update that is causing players to not be able to connect to dedicated servers. So we're going to go through that and the bug tracker, how you guys can actually help the developers even more, more efficiently, more properly. So all that, let's go. It's the Valheim news. So if you added up all the playtime hours, 15,000 years, all the watch time hours on Twitch alone, 35 million hours and then they're up to 39 in the best reviewed games on Steam. A huge achievement. So if you haven't left a review on Steam yet, go and do it now. In the last four weeks, Valheim has sold more copies than Ark did, Minecraft, Conan Exiles, DayZ and Rust all put together in its first month. I always reference them because they're like the biggest survival games going and it's just great to see. Fantastic stuff. Keep it up, Iron Gate Studios. So if you want to help with the development of Valheim, you can go and report the bugs on the actual tracker. This will be in the comment section pinned. Obviously, don't go start in making brand new ones. Only just maybe add to some, have a little glance to see if your issue is already in there. But there is a significant amount of people having problems with the dedicated server stopping connecting after the latest patch, which is meant to fix a little bit of lag and pretty much latency when you join. So if you are having problems joining a server that you were previously playing on, it does look like people know about it. Although it does seemingly affect people that have actually started up a server themselves on their own PC more so. So hopefully that will be fixed soon. It's going to be like this. Anyone doubting it? Like Valheim is early access. As long as the game is not unplayable. That's the only issue I have with games in early access. I don't mind a few crashes here and there. I don't mind a few days of possibly not even being able to connect to certain things like private servers. As long as you can actually play it on your own PC at least, there are workarounds for this kind of stuff. It's not the end of the world. And obviously if you join the Valheim Discord, make sure you're posting the right kind of stuff in the right channels. But your best bet is to properly log stuff that's going on with the bug tracker. So it's not hard to find exactly how far Valheim has come in just a short period of time. A couple of years being worked on by almost a lone developer for a big bulk of that time, it's huge improvements have taken place. Now I love this stuff as I said, you can go all the way through and check out this developer has these prototypes and tried all sorts of stuff. Whether it was a prototype for a speed racer kind of game, or a open world RPG style game. The developer has tried a bunch of different things. Some obviously a lot better maybe than other designs. And I can't see too much correlation between this and Valheim. Maybe a little bit more Terraria-like. But yeah, it is pretty interesting. I love seeing how developers kind of come up with the ideas for their creations. This one's from nearly nine years ago, Tororoko. Looks like it's a first-person alien exploration game. Definitely based more on shooters and stuff. And you can see it's got kind of like a Doom Halo vibe going on maybe. If I was being super, super generous. In fact, this might be the reason why there is a sort of little rocket ship that looks very much like this without the textures in Valheim. A little easter egg or nod to some of his previous work. But this looks pretty cool. It looks like it's an old Star Wars sort of pod racer style game. You can go ahead and spawn this in on your own with an admin command. I've shown it off in another video, but be warned it does stick around forever unless you use another command to get rid of all dropped items. But yeah, I don't think it's ever going to be added to Valheim. It's just a little easter egg. I could be wrong though. But here's where it all starts to come together for Valheim fans. Fied or F-E-Y-J. -E Some of you guys pointed out that they'd actually seen this game a long time ago, back when it was called this. And I was a bit hesitant. I was like, oh, I'm sure this game has always been called Valheim. But you were right. 
take a look at the very, very first Alpha Alpha prototype for Valheim. You can see the environment is kind of there and the atmosphere is there. And there are definitely still some of the character models and stuff there. Although it's pretty interesting to see how the enemies have evolved. Well done on getting some art done or an artist to come on board and give it a little bit more shape. But you see like the campfire looks pretty much exactly the same as he's battling out. And I'm pretty sure a lot of these animations are identical, obviously just with new meshes and new character models. But yeah, this is really cool stuff. I love seeing this stuff. I can't stress enough how much I could cover more development stuff and see how developers make their games or get a chance to talk to them. But the mechanics, the log rolling, the collision, it's all there. The present ones that we kind of really dig and love in Valheim, you can see it's early inceptions. Just picking up all the timber, it's a, not a bad little demo. So it definitely showed promise even way back then. Now this is back from September 2017, so nearly four years ago, it will be in a few months. And you see the building system is pretty much exactly how it is now, albeit a little bit more freeform. I mean, you can just chuck this stuff around, but it looks pretty much the same as it is now. What I'm really digging here is something called the marshland. So I'm guessing this is going to actually transform into the mistlands or it's a combination of the swamps and the mistlands. I don't think this is actually going to appear in the game. It does look like they've moved on and have simply made this marshlands into maybe the swamp or split it up into this and the mistlands. But it's kind of got that same sort of vibe to it. I kind of like the environments here. We've got the Sirtlins obviously. So that's a dead giveaway that this eventually became the swamplands. And just using the bow and arrow, it looks exactly the same animations there kind of thing obviously just again new models etc and taking on some enemies we've got some of the graylins here and they look pretty much more or less the same too so yeah really really cool stuff the next one is going to be the troll and this really does show how much certain things change and how much they don't it looks almost identical the troll doesn't look much different as it did four years ago nearly and i love it i absolutely love it and the environment's obviously much bigger and wider here these meadows are gorgeous for building in but yeah as you can see the troll is definitely i had a little bit of work i'm sure actually looking on it a little bit more the arms maybe have been adjusted a little bit more differently in the body shape but the face looks similar it's good to see the furnace there it's pretty much the same the smelter um, but the workbench has obviously had some changes too and the attacks they're pretty much still the same so this is when it was about to become Valheim proper, a proper combat system implemented. And again, very similar to what we see now with the combat. Still pixelated, obviously heavily inspired, as I said, by the PlayStation 2 era of gaming. That's the look, that's the kind of vibe they've always wanted to have. And they've just pulled it off so massively well. But this is when it proper got changed into Valheim and where the game suddenly started to take shape even more. Here's the early, early Draugrs, which look like they're in the dev test files as training test dummies. So hopefully we can actually use them properly in the game or be able to make them because they look pretty cool. But yeah, you can see a lot of the stuff here is just how it always is, like with the barrows that you go in. Although the dungeons definitely have changed the most. I have shown this off in more detail where I took a good 30 minutes of playtime through the early alpha, which you can no longer play unless you found a cracked version of it. The developer has taken it off the itch.io site as it was free to play for a while. Now, I had seen a few of these clips floating around on Twitter. I often go look in and follow a lot of game dev and so that I've always kept up to date. But this was the one that really sold me on Valheim, that I knew this game could be special if or when originally it would actually come out. It was the water system. We've seen some good looking water. Sea of Thieves was great. Even Atlas to an extent looked fantastic. It seems to be adding more and more to a lot of games that the water mechanics are good. But Valheim is so fantastic. And the way it mixes with the environment, the weather, the fog, the rain, it all just blends so nicely. But this was definitely the one that made me think, oh, damn, I want to cover this. I'm going to play the hell out of this. Where can I learn more info? And that's when I started looking into the itch.io free alpha game version of it. And not long after that, we got a much more glimpse at the winter biome, which again, just looks fantastic. Again, very similar to what we have now. Obviously, the character models have still changed a little bit more. I'm going through the swamps now, how they've evolved from that marshlands. You can see a lot of the UI is very similar, maybe a little bit more pixelated in the top left than you currently find it, but more or less the same. But the map is probably the biggest change, or the minimap anyway. It does look a lot more different. So if you do want to see more of that, go and check out the huge changes video I've got. That literally shows me playing it for around 20 minutes, the old alpha version. This Wired interview lists that it's got an interview with the creator. But it turns out, according to uh, Richard Svensson, it wasn't him. But obviously someone that does work for the company. 
And while it does go over quite a bit of stuff we already know, there are some little snippets or a bit of understanding about the success of Valheim. This was the reason I thought I would cover all of the development of Valheim, little snippets as it did list the link again to Richard Svensson's YouTube page. So Fjord means feud in Swedish. Now this article's okay, Wired is trying to maybe compare it to like quick success of games like Among Us and then quickly, swiftly saying actually it's more like Rust. You guys never played Terraria? Wired pretty much talks about success and how much community involvement is important and IronGate have said that they had a pretty open dialogue with the community during the development and have taken on a bunch of feedback and ideas and it's really helped shape the gameplay of the game today. Wired asks if they think Valheim has innovated compared to other survival games. They've said that they don't think they've invaded anything. That being said, they do think they've got an audience in making Valheim PvE focused rather than PvP. We don't really feel that we compare that much to the games you most think of when thinking about survival genre. Don't get me wrong, those games are great, but we're going for another audience. We just want you to have a cozy adventure with your friends or solo for that matter. And I totally agree, it's the vibe it gives, cozy. I've mentioned that a bunch of times in my little reviews. What is the art aesthetic of Valheim? PlayStation Modern, perhaps, or Neo PlayStationism? They ask with the two million copies sold, so this is quite a bit of an old interview, really, that's resurfaced. How did they get to that level of success? Eingate have said that they really believe that Valheim would be popular, but these numbers are absolute bonkers. They also say that Coffee Stain Publishing and Swipe Right have both helped them, though, especially getting the word out to creators, helping make trailers, and pretty much just do the usual press influencer thing. If you're a brand new player to Valheim, what is the developer's best advice? And they've said to get the hoe as soon as possible, give you a chance to flatten the ground and make house construction much more easier, or enjoyable at least. The map is huge in Valheim, why is it so big? And they've said to have space fill up interesting locations. As they say, it's about the journey, not the destination. Here at Iron Gate, we are big fans of Daggerfall. Many a beer has been drunk while extolling the virtues of that great white whale. They go on to talk about the music, it's been composed by Patrick Jarlstam. They had inspiration from Wind Waker for the sailing music, but I didn't want it to make it too folksy. And although Valheim is very Viking influenced, it's actually Norse mythology, but not directly related to it. Hence why there are some liberties with certain things. Wired also asked, Wired also spoke about other survival games being quite lone wolf, and while it's great that Valheim encourages you to invite your friends, they said it's quite natural, we always have ourselves enjoyed carp experiences such as these, and contrary to what I believed, I thought the game was only ever meant to be for four to six players, it does look like they've always had ambitions to increase that to ten. Ten Vikings in a boat, staring their way through harsh storms to find a new shore to raid, foreign wildlife and dangers. They were asked about the weaknesses of Valheim, and they've said definitely the aspects of the networking code. Suffice to say that the influx of players brought some very piquant, piquant problems to light in that department. Of course, there are lots of other issues too. We have a public bug tracker that we encourage players to use and try and fix everything as fast as possible. And they just kind of finish off with reiterating what the roadmap says. But the most important thing, and I think the one that we've got to get across to people that don't understand, they want to state for the record that they don't plan on doing new content until we ourselves are happy with the current state of the game. That is for sale, i.e. for the foreseeable future we try to get as many bugs squashed and issues sorted as possible. So yeah, it's a fairly decent interview, not massively long, but there are some snippets there that I didn't know about. If you're watching Richard, I am so sorry, after maybe me including a link in a previous video talking about the inspirations for it, he's gonna made his Pinterest private. I mean, I, I think he only gained about 11 followers from the link that I had in the video, but it does look like he's hidden that stuff away now. It's such a shame. It was so cool, some of the stuff that he had. So if you do get a chance, Richard, please make it public. I just hope no one gave you any grief or tried messaging you on it. It's purely just to take a look at what inspires the developers. But there we go. That is the Valheim news today. Hopefully we get some more juicy info about updates soon. Expectations need to be managed, it seems. Don't expect crazy big content being added anytime soon. But it seems like the majority of you don't care. You don't want the developers to rush. You kind of just are enjoying playing the game. And you're not that desperate for a huge amount of brand new content. You just want to keep it stable. And it seems like developers are on the same page. So... I'll leave you with this beautiful picture that I took. I can't wait to dive into some more mod and build creations. If you've actually got a world you want to show me, I'm going to be doing world tours very soon. Come and join my Discord and pop some pictures in. And I'll see you right back for another Valheim video. Tomorrow it is going to be the 10 essential mods you need to download. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.